Welcome our video friends to uh, Through the Bible, Brother David. We're honored that you joined with us today. A uh, beautiful Sunday morning in the month of August. The temperatures have dropped and uh, so has the humidity. And so it's uh, a beautiful morning. Matter of fact, my wife has a fire going and it feels really good this morning. And, uh, and we always enjoy a little fire. <clears throat> but uh, we're at a place called Persimmon Ridge Road. Uh, runs through a mainly wildlife uh, management area in the mountains. We're close to Caesar's Head uh, and Highway 276 is where we're close to. If you're familiar with this area, you know about where we're at. I know some of my motorcycle friends know this area very well. We have ridden through here many times. <clears throat> so, and I have, a lot of people hike up through these mountains. I have done so myself. Matter of fact, you can go in right here and just hike uh, for, and for the rest of the day if you wanted to, right here where we're sitting at. And sometimes people stop here and start their hike from right here. <clears throat> there's, <clears throat> there's about five different places uh, that I know of around this part of the mountain where you could go in to hike if you would like to hike. But we're not here to hike. We're here to uh, do the videos on Through the Bible, and it's uh, good to have you with me. Well, today we're going to pick back up in the book of Esther, and uh, and the uh, and the, and the history that was taking place and unfolding here in the palace of Shushan, with Herasrus the king, and Haman the adversary, and Mordecai her uncle, who stood for the Lord and stood for that which was right. And it's a very, very beautiful story that happened to you. I've never, I've never seen Hollywood writers come up with a story uh, to, uh, to even match this historical um, moment that we find in the scriptures here. Never have. Uh, I mean, this here is a beautiful story. And it's all true. That's what I love about it so much. It's very, very true. And as we think about this in chapter 4, the Jews have been fasting and praying because um, Haman has conspired uh, and got the king to sign uh, a law that on a certain day they're going to kill all the Jews throughout the whole province. That is a big, big area, and they intend to kill every Jew that's within it. He's gotten the king to agree to do that. And uh, so the date's been set. The the law has been sent throughout all the provinces. And so it's just a matter of days until uh, they descend upon the Jewish people and kill them every one. And the law of the Medes and the Persians cannot be changed. And so the Jews have gone to fast and seeking the Lord in prayer for their deliverance. And, uh, and anyhow, uh, of course, Mordecai, he's out in the streets uh, with his... Uh, uh, fasting and clothed in sackcloth and crying out. And when this is heard, uh, Esther from the queen's palace calls out and sends her uh, Haytach uh, out to see what's wrong, what's going on out here. And so he goes out and uh, Mordecai uh, tells uh, Esther that uh, what, or through Haytach what, what's going to happen. And uh, verse 10 of chapter 4, and Haytach came and Esther spake unto Hatach and gave him commandment to Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that, what's, that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come to the king and to the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of, of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in <clears throat> to the king these thirty days. That's Esther's word back to Mordecai. And they told Morde and they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth? For thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. 
Now that's some wonderful words that Mordecai answered unto Esther, actually his niece. <clears throat> and, uh, and the faith that he had uh, to say that uh, deliverance, uh, enlargement and deliverance shall rise to the Jews from another place. If you don't help us, it's going to come from somewhere. Obviously, Mordecai knew the uh, prophecies uh, that had been passed down from generations unto him, and that a Messiah was to come out of the house of David, who, who was not yet born at this time. And, but he knew that uh, the, uh, the nation of Israel had a great future. To say the least, I'm sure he knew that. <clears throat> he had heard <clears throat> of how God had spoken to Jacob and to Abraham promising, promising them that land uh, over uh, from which they had been carried captive. They knew this, he knew this was going to happen one way or the other. And he tells Esther the queen uh, that one way or the other we'll be delivered from this. Uh, there'll be some of us to live and to go back into the land of Cana and to carry on the great nation of Israel. He is so right in saying that, so completely right to say that. And uh, he says, if you hold your peace at this time, so God's going to bring it from somewhere else. I marvel at his faith. Remember that in this day, uh, they had very little of the scriptures in their hands. At the time that this was written, very little of the scriptures did they have. Uh, yes, they had some, but very little. And... Uh, of course, this was after the time of Moses that this was written, after the time of David that this was written. I think I said before David a while ago, but that's a mistake. It's after, uh, after the life of David. This was after all the kings had reigned and that the people had been carried away captive. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got that turned around a little bit. But uh, he knew from the writings of Moses and even the writings of David that there had to be a Jerusalem uh, that the Lord would be crucified in and, and would return to one day to rule over the world with a rod of iron. And so Mordecai knew this and the faith that he had. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. Right here we see that Mordecai is speaking that which is pleasing unto God because he is speaking by faith. Now that's a wondrous statement made in, in the Bible uh, that without faith it is impossible to please God. Mordecai at this time, uh, I, that, I don't know if he realizes the very important role that he was playing, but he was pay, playing a very important role in the history of Israel and doing so by faith and that which he knew and that which he believed. Uh, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing. There's always that question from man, how can I have faith? Well, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's how we get faith. And also we're told in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 that we're saved by faith, <clears throat> by grace through faith, and that in of ourselves is the gift of God. When we hear the word, and then God it gives us the gift of faith to hear, to understand that. That's the way that it happens. It's kind of a twofold step. We hear the word, then God acts upon that and gives us the faith to believe that. Uh, and so that's how faith works. But without faith, uh, uh, you know, our works is dead. We're told that in the book of James. And we're to demonstrate our faith uh, by our works, according to James. And so faith is a wonderful subject and a great subject of the Bible. And we're justified as Abraham believed God and was justified. And so we are justified the same way by believing God. It honors God to believe him and to act upon that which he would tell us to do. And when we believe upon his son that died on the cross for us, we are exercising the faith that God Almighty has given to us by the hearing of the Word and the work of the Holy Spirit within our hearts. And so we have uh, much reasons to want our faith to grow. The Bible speaks of our faith 
to grow in the grace and the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do grow as we trust the Lord. And he grants us to grow strong in his word and we'll grow strong in our faith. I would like to think that my faith is much stronger now than it was the day that I first accepted Christ. It was just about this time of the year. I know it was in August of uh, 1976 uh, that I was saved by God's grace. I, 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 it happened. I never planned for it to happen. I had my life all planned out, so I thought. I was working a job. I was making pretty decent money for the time in the area. And I loved all my outdoor activities like motorcycle riding and kayaking and shooting the bow and shooting guns and hunting and uh, fishing. I just loved uh, being outdoors and doing outdoors adventures and activities. I enjoyed camping. I enjoyed backpacking and uh, so much of that. But one day, as I was painting the chimney for my grandfather Hayes, the Holy Spirit of God moved upon my heart as I stroked the brush on that chimney and, uh, and brought upon me Holy Ghost conviction. I could see that everything that I'd ever done was sinful. My whole life was sinful. Everything that I knew and thought to be sinful and it was so true. The Holy Ghost showed me that. It seemed as if though I could see the fire of hell coming across the pond in the valley below to consume me with. Oh, and I tell you, I asked the Lord, Lord, forgive me. And I, I knew not what to do. I knew not what to do about it. I had never before experienced uh, such a being that surrounded me on that day and brought to my mind exactly what I was and showed me what I really was and the life of sin that I'd been living. Well, my friends, that was a great day. It was a great turning point in my life that day that happened. But I had, at the end, a couple of weeks later in church, uh, I went up and, uh, by, and God gave me saving faith at that time. And then I understood the gospel, how Christ had died for my sins. My friends, that is faith that God gives to us. And as we act by faith, as we move through life, it, it honors God to do that. And we make many moves through our life and do many things by faith. Not being able to see the end, not being able to see everything about it. I believe every time that we give out a gospel tract, we're acting in faith, believing that the Lord will bless His Word. I have two gospel signs located up on Highway 21 up in North Carolina and uh, it has some scripture on them. I put those up according to the word of the Lord as he moved upon my heart to do so several years ago. And by faith, I believe that God will use those signs to speak to the hearts of people that travel up and down that highway. And uh, a move of faith, I couldn't see the results. The truth is, I've never seen any results. But I am sure that God has used that and that God has spoke to the hearts of many people uh, about their soul as they had traveled up and down. Perhaps some of the neighbors who can't help but to look at it. Uh, an act of faith. I couldn't see the results, can't see them to this day. And every time that I give some money to a missionary's work, I can't see the results of that. Sometimes we get reports back from the missionaries that people have been saved churches have been started but back when I gave it I couldn't see that with a natural eye but the Lord is great he brings things to pass and it honors God when we move by faith and act by faith it brings great honor to him when we so do that now I can't always see where the money's going to that I give I have an idea of where it's going. I have an idea of what's going to be done with that. But I can't see that. And so, my friends, uh, faith is a wonderful thing. And it's a blessed thing to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and to know Him as Lord and Savior. And if you do not know Him as your Lord and Savior, uh, call upon Him today. Ask Him to come into your heart and to save your soul. And you'll find He'll do so for eternity's sake. Whom to know aright is to have everlasting life. Sure.